Hi there, I'm Angie Zimmerman, the Flower Diva. I'm going to show you how to make a centerpiece like this one. I have to apologize, I've ordered some lanterns that are going to go in the center and they have not arrived yet. So I'm using this little birdhouse in the place of the lantern for now. And I needed this to show you how you're going to work around it. So in the end, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to push this over to the side and talk about all the different components to this arrangement. So first of all, I purchased these little wooden boxes at one of the local big box type stores and they're natural. So this could be painted if you wanted. In fact, um, I think if this was painted white, it would look really cute or it could even be painted a darker brown or you could pick up another color. Like originally I was going to order green lanterns. I ended up ordering white, but if I went with the green, I could have made this green to match the green lanterns. Because this box is not waterproof, you have to use what's called a liner, which is this plastic component. So that's the liner. And then I've got floral foam, which I've already cut to fit inside. I'm going to push all of this down inside my box. And see how this moves around a little bit? That is not really ideal, especially if you have to transport. So one of the things that you can do to make sure that that doesn't move around is to tape it into place. So literally like this. And I don't want to tape over the box. So instead, what I'm going to do is tape all of this around the liner. So I'm going to pull everything back out again and tape it into the liner. This tape doesn't want to come off my hand. There we go. So let's do this and this. So this is clear bowl tape is what this is typically called. It also comes in green. This is the one quarter inch size. It also comes in a one half inch size. I want to make sure that I go all the way around to make sure that this really stays. When you tape onto the tape itself, it tends to last better or stay better. I'm not quite sure why, but it does. So I try to make sure that I always come back over and, and overlap on my tape. The other thing that you'll want to remember is to bend the end over so that you know where the end is and can easily find it because when you lose the end on this, it's really, really hard to find. Okay, so that's now going to stay in place. And now I'm going to pop that again right back into my wooden box. So because these are going to have the lanterns on top, I need to be able to work around and leave the space. So I'm going to hold the space by just literally placing my lantern, in this case birdhouse, on top of the floral foam, okay? I have my ingredients, my recipe is five white hydrangea, 10 yellow tulips, eight yellow mini callas, 17 to 18, I've allocated 18, but on this one I only use 17 of the Vendella, which is a cream colored rose, and then five stems of the green Hypericum berries. I'm gonna start off with my hydrangea because it really becomes the base of the entire arrangement. So you wanna give your flower a nice slanted cut, and you're going to insert it into the floral foam as deep as you can, and you want to try to evenly space these, but essentially what you're doing is creating almost a collar around the outside of this box. If the foliage looks good and you like that look, you can go ahead and leave it on, and if you don't think it looks good and you don't want it, you can certainly take it off. That's one of those optional things. It really depends on the taste and kind of the look that you're going for. In this case, I know I don't need these bottom foliage. So I'm going to take those off. Again, I'm trying to equally space this as best as I can. It won't be exact because if you notice, I don't have a ruler out and I'm not really measuring. I'm just eyeballing. And it's perfectly fine because I'm going to go around so that you could see this. 
it's perfectly fine because I'm going to be using some other flowers to fill in. So all of that space will be filled in. And the whole idea when you're using mechanics, and your mechanics in this case would be the floral foam and the tape, is to cover that. You don't ever want the people that are going to be sitting at the table enjoying this floral arrangement to see all those mechanics. Okay, so the next flowers that I'm going to put in are going to be the tulips. And the reason that I'm choosing to put these tulips in next is because they're very soft stemmed. And I want to make sure that I still have room where I can get my hands and fingers and maneuver into the floral foam. The floral foam that I'm using is the dense floral foam. It's actually called designer floral foam. And that's not the most ideal for soft stemmed flowers. So again, I'm just doing putting these in next so that I can make sure and be able to maneuver my hands and my fingers and not break anything. I also have on standby a little piece of a hyacinth stick so that I could start a hole in the floral foam to make it easier to insert these really soft stemmed flowers. Now I always try without the stick first, but if I can feel that it's just not going to go, then I use the stick to reinforce. One other thing about tulips, tulips continue to grow even after they've been cut. Tomorrow, this tulip will be probably a half an inch to an inch longer than it is today, even inside this floral arrangement. So again, you want to keep that in mind. And as you're designing, you want to make sure that you realize that these tulips are going to get longer. So you cut them shorter and insert them further into the floral foam than where you ultimately want them to end up. Again, knowing that they're going to grow. Okay, if you did not, when you looked at this arrangement tomorrow, you would see these flowers sticking way out and they would not be where you want them to be and you'd probably be upset and wondering why that happened. So what I'm doing is I'm inserting my second one and I just felt that break. So I'm going to give that a cut right where it broke. And now I'm going to use my stick because I can't take a chance that this breaks any shorter. All right, and that goes in so much easier when it's got to start with that stick. And if you've noticed, I've inserted that even deeper than the first one. So what I'm going to do, I have 10 of these. I'm going to go around and place them in pairs all the way around this centerpiece. At approximately, you know, the same distance. Again, it's approximate. I'm not measuring. <laughs> it's I'm eyeballing. And you'll notice that I'm placing some closer towards the bottom of the container and some towards the top of the container. And in the end, they end up overlapping somewhat. All right, that one doesn't want to go in. So again, I'm going to use my stick to create a deeper hole for this flower. And my flower stem is a little bit fatter than the stick, so that stick does not make such a big hole that it causes a problem for the flower. All right. So again, sort of towards the bottom and then I'll do one towards the top. And I am trying to go in pretty darn deep. Again, knowing that these are going to grow. So let me move that out of the way just for a moment. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm very gently pushing and I'm holding my fingers as close to the floral foam as possible as I'm gently pushing. And since I have 10 stems that I've allocated for this a centerpiece and I had five hydrangeas, it's kind of working out that I'm putting two of the tulips on in between each of the hydrangeas. Okay, and one more spot here.
Okay, now the next flower that I'm going to put into place is the calla lily, the mini calla lily. Again, because these are pretty soft stem flowers. The roses, on the other hand, are pretty hard stemmed flowers, so I won't have any trouble at all getting them into this arrangement. So, same thing, I've got eight, not ten, of these allocated, so I'm going to try and find slightly different positions. But I'm going to pair these up as well. And if need be, you can use the stick to create a better hole to get your flower into. It makes it so much easier. It really does. I don't know why I don't just start off that way. I guess I keep trying to do it the purest way. So I'm going through the hydrangea. I'm not really using it as an armature, so to speak, but I am trying to have the flowers protrude from there because I think it looks pretty. So it's not functional. This is not holding anything up. I'm not using the hydrangea to hold anything up. But I'm just inserting my flowers through them because I think it looks good. <laughs> And as it turns out, it's sort of framing corners. Not that that's what I wanted to do, but I can see that's what it's doing. Right? doesn't look so good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the bird cage back on top. Bird house, I guess, is what this is. And now I'm going to start adding in my roses. These are the hardy flowers that aren't so difficult to get into the floral film. So you always want to make sure that you've covered up your mechanics. And again, in this case, the mechanics is the floral foam. So notice how I put my first flower up on top. I now need to make sure that any floral foam that's showing around that birdcage doesn't show anymore. And ultimately, I'm going to pair up, maybe even put three together in the terms of the flowers, these roses. It's kind of a design style. It tends to um, look better when the flowers are grouped. Okay. And I don't really want all of my roses up on top, so now I'm making sure that I at least get some down below. I want them scattered throughout. I mean, essentially, that's the look I'm going for. Scattered throughout in twos or threes. And these can go through the hydrangea as well. And in this case, the hydrangea is not holding them up. 
it's just a pretty look. So I felt that hydrangea was flopping down a little bit too much, so I used this rose to kind of hold it up. Okay, so you want to take a look at how it's going to look if you were sitting at this table. And it looks like I need a few more flowers over here in this front area. That's looking pretty good. And I have two flowers left over, which means that I only used 16 roses on this particular arrangement. And I used 17 on that. So you always want to have a starting point, you know, a recipe to follow, but know that you may use more, you may use less. So you always want to order extra flowers. I guess that's the moral of the story is make sure you always have enough flowers. The other thing you never can be sure of is um, what kind of condition the flowers are going to come in. They, you know, if they're shipped to you, they go through a lot of um, stress. So you want to make sure that you have extra ones in case some of them don't make it through the delivery as well as you'd like them to. I'm going to try and get two pieces out of this because of these laterals down here. That can be used as one piece and so can this other one. Okay, I've got two more pieces. That one. I don't know if I could break that one up. I'm not going to. Okay, and then one more in through here. And we have a finished centerpiece.
great. So again, take another look, make sure you don't need anything else. I think I am going to use one of these roses that I didn't use. In fact, I'm going to use them both. Okay, so now I did use 18. All right, I think this is looking pretty good. Go around one more time, and it looks fantastic. So enjoy, just copy exactly what I did. If you can't find you know, the exact container, find something similar. You have the general idea of how this is done. You need a container if it's not waterproof, you need a liner. If you're gonna use this type of a container, floral foam works really well. If you're using soft stemmed flowers, make sure you get soft stemmed floral foam. If you're using um, hard stemmed flowers, then you can use the more dense floral foam. I have a mixture here, quite a mixture. I've got hydrangeas, tulips, roses, mini kellas, and hypericum berries, which all gives a nice texture to this floral arrangement. And the point of this arrangement is a garden party. These are gonna be used on tables that will have brown linens with a pale green overlay. So that's why I chose the whites and the yellows with the little pops of green and the berries. Enjoy.